Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the CAD Cage, brought to you by Zentech Consultants. Uh, and in the CAD Cage, uh, we put two CAD systems side by side to test out an important design function to see if one's better, one's worse, if they're the same, right? Um, and today, what I want to do is, is I want to get started with today's competitors, which are AutoCAD, right? Which I have here on the left of my screen versus the kind of dangerous new kid on the block here, BricsCAD. Um, and today, I want to look at the process of working with parametric blocks, right? And parametric blocks are taking basic block functionality and, and kind of adding some intelligence to them, right? Giving different visibility states, uh, different control parameters, the ability to resize and, you know, set how they interact with other items on your screen, right? It's making your blocks a little bit more intelligent. Um, you can see that what I have here is, in, in you know, like I said, I got AutoCAD here on the left of my screen, BricsCAD over here on the right. Uh, and in both of these instances, I kind of have a very basic block. All I've done is I've just drawn a simple block where I've got a door, right, in three different states, right? Closed, half open, full open, have the exact same block in both drawings, right, with the same name. All right, and I just want to kind of show you how you work with these to kind of do some, some basic parametrics in each of these. So what I'm going to do here right, is I'm going to go in, I want to say, hey, you know, we want the ability when we insert this, this block to be able to flip it from one side to another, right, from one side of the wall to the other, adjust the direction of swing, right, as well as, you know, whether the door flips left or right. And I'm going to do that in both. So I want to show, I'm going to go in here, and it's pretty much the same process. We're going to go into these, right, and we're just going to kind of open these up in the block editor, right, and you can see that when we get into uh, the AutoCAD setup, that what we get here is in the block editor, we get all of our uh, dynamic or, or parametric editing features and tools, right, and you see that right off the bat, we can start with the parameters here, and we can add a flip parameter. All right, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to go and I'm going to add a flip parameter across the middle here to be able to flip it, for, you know, the door swing from one side to the other, and that creates a flip state, all right? And I'm going to put the label for the flip state right there, all right? Then I'm going to do another flip state, all right, which I'm just going to kind of take from the middle of the door, kind of just up in that direction, good enough, and I'll call that flip state too, all right? Now, there it is, and it looks like we have a flip state, but I've seen people struggle with that because you don't have a flip state yet. We, all we've done here is set a parameter. Now we have to actually provide an action for these, so I do have to go over to the action tab here in AutoCAD. I use the flip tool, then I have to pick this parameter, right? And then I have to select all the items that I want to flip, right? When I do that, so I'm going to select the arcs, you know, my my all my doors, so I can flip from one side to another horizontally, right? And then I have to do that again, right? Going with the other parameter, setting that one, and then selecting all the items again. Make sure we include that door down there, all the items that I want to be able to flip, right? When I'm done. So it's kind of a, a multi-stage process, right? And then when I'm done from there, I can just go ahead and save the block, close the block editor, okay? Right, and then you can see in there, I can go ahead and I'll, I, I can now go in and I can set my flip states for my door. See, I can flip it from one side to the other, right? Up and down. All right, not bad. Works perfectly fine. It does take a little bit of time. I got to do multiple setups here. Um, what I do like about BricsCAD is I can kind of do the same thing, right? Exact process. I'm just going to go ahead and open this up in the BricsCAD block editor. Right, and what I can do is jump onto the parametric tab here, right, and I'm just going to pull this out a little bit so we can see it a little bit better, so you can see the tools. Um, and you see over here, it's very easy for me to go in right, under my parametric tools. And you see I've got a flip line. It becomes a very easy thing for me with a single click. I'm just going to go from here over to here. I want it to flip over again, the midpoint of my wall. And you see it just asks me for a name, right? And I'll just call that our, our horizontal flip line. I'll just call it, you know, horizontal. Right, and then I'm just going to go in and add another flip line. Right? That goes right off the middle of the door. And again, I'll just turn my ortho on and draw it up about the same. Right? And I'll just call it my vertical flip line. Right? And same thing, right? From there, I just go to my block editor and I'm just going to save that block. Right? Now, the, the, the big difference here right, is that you know, where you do get that set up, which is nice, right in place with uh, BricsCAD. Right? When you work on these blocks, when you select them, you'll see that you get see my horizontal and vertical parameters that I defined. I can easily go in and just choose these and say, hey, flip it, don't flip it. And you see it gives me a preview, so I can see how that's going to work in each direction. All right? So I can flip it that way, and I can flip it the other way. All right? So I can flip that around to whatever direction I want. Right? Or go ahead and set it back to not flip, whatever we need. All right? And that, that's important. I know it seems like a little bit of extra work to have to go into this properties rather than doing it individually, but there's an important benefit to that that we'll see in a little bit. So, um, you know, not, not terrible. Both ways work just fine. Um, I find that the BricsCAD one having a single flip line state, I think, works a little bit easier, saves me a few steps. All right? The other thing that we want to be able to do with any kind of a block is control visibility states. So I'm going to go back to uh, the AutoCAD setup here. All right? 
And I'm going to go pretty quickly through this and I'm going to get into mass detail on it. But when you get in here to create visibility states in AutoCAD, and again, I'm just going to kind of drag this out a little bit so we can see. You can see that most of your, your visibility states here are, are turned off. We have to go back and get a parameter, right? And then we have to add a visibility parameter, basically where we want the drop down uh, grip to show up, which I'm just going to drop kind of in the middle here. Then once you have that, this is where I, I, I find it to be a little awkward in the way that AutoCAD works. I kind of have to go in. You see it's created just a blank visibility state one. I have to go in here and I have to rename that, right? So if I want to do the first one where I say, hey, I want to I want to do the fully open view, okay? I can go in and I can create that. Now I've got these buttons up here, right? That let me go in and say, hey, certain things I want to be invisible in the open state. And I can go in and say, what do I want to turn off? Well, I want to turn off that. And I want to turn off that. And I want to turn off that, right? In the open state. Oh, and you see I should have turned off the, the setup, right? So now I have to go back and say, oh, it turns certain things on. I want to leave that half of the arc on. Okay, that's a little bit better, All right? Now I got to go and I got to create different states for all of them, right? So now I'd have to go in and create a new state, and this would be my half open, okay? All right, and I'll say okay, and okay, and then same thing again, right? Now I have to go in and say, all right, in the half open state, what do I want to turn off? Let's turn off that. Let's turn off the top arc, and let's turn off that, All right? So that's what the half open door will look like, and that, that's okay. Right, and I have to do it again. You can see I've, I've got a bunch of states to, to go through in here. Um, and I'll just add one more here. We'll just do the, the close just to show you. Right? And I'll just do the close state and say, okay. Right, and again, now I have to go back and reselect all the items in the close state. Right, I want to turn off all of those and that. And that's what the door looked like in the close state. Okay, And then I can set which one is my default. I'll set it for open. Right? And then again, I'm going to go back in and save the block. Yes, save the changes, close the block editor. Now you can see that I've got that and now I've got different states, right? That I can go in, I can set it to the half open state, I can set it to the closed state. That works out pretty well. That's a very nice feature. We like the way that works. Um, so pluses on for Autodesk and in, in, in setting that. But I can do exactly the same thing over here. I'm just going to close that properties tab when I get into working in BricsCAD. And again, I'm just going to bring it over a little bit so we can read the, the tools a little bit better on my screen here. All right, I'm just going to go back into the block editor, same thing, and I'm going to write to my parametric tools. All right, and you see one of the things that I have here is the ability to just um, go in and open up. See, it's in my parametric blocks. So I'm still not quite big enough here. Uh, and I can turn on my visibility state panel. And you see it's a, a very simple to use panel here. All right, and I can just go in and I can hit this plus sign down here in the bottom and say, look, I'm going to do my, uh, I'll call it my door swing. All right, it's a new state, all right, or a new setup. And then from here, I'm going to add a state to that. And the first state I'm going to add is, uh, let's do open first. We'll do the open state. And you see now I can just add another one for the half open. All right, and I'll add the third one, which is our close. And what's nice about this is I can do all three of them at once. And then now they're all already set with all the visibility set. Now just from here, I can just go in and say, hey, which items do I want to make invisible? All right? In the open state, I do not want to see that door or that door. That's what it looks like in the open state. Now, you see, when I go to half open, everything comes back on. I'm not playing like I have to in AutoCAD, uh, which I do like. All right, so now here I can do the same thing. Just click this button, right, and say, hey, make other entities invisible, right? In the half, I want to turn off that and that and the door here. That's the half open state, okay? Then in the closed state, right, same thing. I'm just going to turn off items I don't want to see. Make entities invisible. I want everything out here turned off, and there you go. All right, and then I just set the default view. And just like we did before, right, I'm just going to go and save the block, right? And then same thing, right? When I go over to the properties panel here, right, and I select the block, you see that I've got now the, the door swing. You see I can set it to close, half open, open as I need. No problem. Very easy to use, right? So in that, pretty similar, right? I think a little bit of an edge. I, I kind of like that interface for BricsCAD a little bit better, but they, they both work just fine in terms of visibility states, right? So the other things now that I want to talk about, you see that out here I actually have on each of these drawings. I've drawn some walls. Right? And you'll see that, you know, I kind of drew these doors with 8-inch. Uh, I'm just going to go back to my uh, parametric state here and just turn off my panel. Um, you see that, you know, I, I've got 8-inch thick walls. I kind of drew those with, with that setup. Now, here's the thing. Right? When you're working with AutoCAD, one of its real serious limits is that there's no real good way to be able to put these blocks in right in line with walls and to be able to break the walls and create openings. Right? The very best thing that you can do inside of, of AutoCAD right, is you can go in, 
I, and you can actually create a, uh, a wipeout in here, right? And I'm just going to kind of oversize it here. I'm just going to kind of do a wipeout, right? Around where, you know, where, where the door is. And I would be a little bit more careful. This is going to, you know, I'm just kind of rough showing it in here because we're, we're running tight on time here. Um, and you see, I can go ahead and I would just go ahead and I'll, you know, uh, send that under, I set the draw order, all right? And I'm going to send it under the wall so that the wall will show, okay? Through the wipeout and just the other stuff behind it. I, and then I can save that block, okay? And I'll save the changes, right? And close the block editor. Now, when I go ahead and I insert that block somewhere, right? See, so I've got the parametric door on there. All right, I'll bring that in. All right, you see when I go in, and now I just go ahead and I don't like that. All right, but you see when I go in to put in this door, you see it does a wipeout, right? And it's not perfect. Like I said, I got to turn off, you know, the, the wipeout edges and stuff. I'm not going to worry about that today. But you see, then I can go in and I can rotate this, but it's still a block, right? I've still got to move it and measure it. And, and the big thing here is you notice that that wall line, they're not actually broke. They're, it's just kind of a mask that's hiding the wall behind it. So in terms of measuring and dimensioning, there's really no easy way to work with that, all right, in terms of, of uh, dealing with the Autodesk blocks. The other problem that you have here is that when you get into um, Autodesk, oh, because it's already open. As it's over on my other screen. So why couldn't I insert? All right, that I have no way to adjust the wall widths. So you see, if I go in and I have to line it up, you can see that my wall in my door, I'd have to have different size doors. I mean, you can, there are some more advanced features, but it does take quite a while uh, to be able to do that in the AutoCAD setups, All right? Whereas I find with BricsCAD, right, it actually works a lot easier. I do like this, that I can just go in, I'm gonna open this up and I'll show you how to work this in, in BricsCAD. Same thing, I'm gonna go to my parametric tools and let's just kind of bring this back out again so we can see all, all the tools that we're working at. And one of the things I like here is that I can just go in and I can just create a reference curve, all right? And what the reference curve does, I just pick these lines here and here, okay? And then I have the option down here to parametize, or parametrize, however that's pronounced, and just pick that. And then what that does now is when I save and I use that, all right? I'm just gonna go ahead again, I'm just gonna save that block. Now when I go in and I insert that block, all right? I'm gonna, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the browser, I meant to hit the okay button. All right, now you can see when I bring it close, this wall on the left is eight inches. So first off, what I love about BricsCAD, when I go to insert the block, notice that the block gives me the ability to measure where it's going to do. And you'll notice that it rotates itself automatically. I didn't do anything crazy with this, right? The flip control that we, we put in is already working as I move from side to side with my mouse. So, and then I can use the tab key to enter the exact distances from the end. So I can place this wall exactly. And you see it's lining up. And when I place it, right, you see that what's happening right now? See that the lines are, are being broken, that it's actually got openings inside those, right? And that's really nice, right? But what's more important with that, right, is that when I go in and I place these, right, I can place multiple doors. So I can go this side and you see I can flip doors in different directions in the 8-inch wall because that's how wide my wall was. But more importantly, right, I've got a 6-inch wall over here. And you see that it's placed in the 6-inch wall. And here's a 4-inch wall. And you see that it's adjusted and it places the wall and the gap in the four inch wall with no problem, okay? All right, and what you're seeing here, the, the lines here, those are just a, a basic layer that I had on this layer. It's, it's your flip lines, all right? And I can turn off the flip lines and controls. And you see how neat and clean that drawing becomes, all right? Which is really amazing. Now, one last thing that I told you, I told you that properties dialogue and the fact that you can use that, all right, would be important later. Here's the other thing I wanna show you. Now, if I wanna go in and have these two doors in AutoCAD, if I wanna go in and change these to be closed doors, Right? I can go to my visibility state and I can make this one close. Right? Then I have to go to this one and make this one close. Right? Even if I do like a select similar in AutoCAD, right? so if I go in and do a uh, select similar, I got both doors and I want to take this one open, see? Only one at a time this way. Right? BricsCAD, I think, works much, much better because you ever work in a, in, a, in a setup where you're like, hey, you know, all of these doors should all be half, right? They're existing doors. I, I can just go in here and do a select similar here. And because it's here in the properties panel, right, you see that I can take the door swing and make them all half open in one shot. If you have hundreds, thousands of doors, that's huge. Right? And I think in that type of respect in dealing with these dynamic blocks, the way that BricsCAD's designed it, the way that it works and the simplicity of defining these properties, I think clear winner here goes to BricsCAD. So there you go, folks. All right, and that will cut us for today, and we will catch you next time in the CAD Cage.